Welcome to Excel and Finance video number 27. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 5 or the PDFs for chapter 5, click on the link directly below the video and scroll down to the finance section. Hey, in the last video, we saw how to do present value calculation for future cash flow. So here's the deal. We wanted a positive cash flow of $1,000 at time period 4, 2000 at 6 and 6000 at 10. And what did we do? We discounted these cash flows back, took out all the interest for each individual amount, and got how much we would put in the bank. Now let's take this one step further. These are positive cash flows. This is how much we're paying to get these future cash flows. So we're saying, I'm willing at this rate here to pay $5,998.61 to get these future cash flows. Let's go over to the PDF. Here's how we did it here. I'm going to scroll ahead and we're going to take the same idea but we're going to apply it in a different way. Here's our future positive cash flows. But this isn't us putting money in a bank and withdrawing it. This is a machine. So this is called discounted cash flow analysis to value an asset. So here it is. You've, you've, you're deciding between a bunch of machines to buy. So what if you plan to buy a machine that will, and you've estimated, will yield these cash flows, right? Positive, positive, positive at these years. And it could be negative and positive, and we'll see an example of that later. No problem. These are future cash flows, positive ones that you want. So your question is, how much are you willing to pay for these? Now, here's the situation. You, you go out and you see the, the machine cost 100K, right? And you've estimated that these are the uh, amounts of cash flow that you can generate from this particular machine. So no problem. We do our discounted cash flow analysis. Here's our time, right? These are the cash flows. These are the future positive future value amounts. We discount them back and we'll use our PV function just like we've been doing and here's these amounts. We add them up and no way. We are willing, just like in our uh, bank account example, we are willing to put to pay this amount in cash to get these future uh, positive cash flow amounts. So this is an asset though. These are th uh, cash flow amounts we've estimated. So as you can see, a pretty useful way to see if a particular project is worth buying. Now, the question is, if we are willing to pay 124,000 and some change and the machine only cost 100,000, do you buy it? Absolutely. You've esti you're willing to pay all of this and it's less? Boom. So this is cash discounted cash flow analysis to to decide uh, whether to buy an asset. Now, there's lots of estimating going on, right? So you have to do your, you know, projected um, revenues and expenses and tax benefit of depreciation and all sorts of things uh, to get your cash flows. But once you do, and we'll actually do some of that later in chapter nine or something like that. But for us right now, here's our cash flows, and we want to do our same calculation and calculate the present value. All right, I'm going to come over here. The discount rate, remember it could be annual rate, could be APR, we show our math symbol I, but it, uh, often, usually when you're doing present value, discounted cash flows, we say discount rate. Now you could do it at time zero, and so I'm going to just going to start right here. Present value, the rate, 15%. Now that's pretty high. Usually internally when you're analyzing purchasing an asset, it's not just an interest rate. It's actually a discount rate or the return you must earn on your asset. So it's usually pretty high. I'm going to hit F4, comma, NPER, that's this right here. P payment, or we're not going to use that argument yet. Future value, I'm going to click right there. Control Enter and copy it down. These are negative, so we come up here, equals SUM, and highlight this range. Notice if I make a mistake, no problem, as long as the dancing answer is still dancing, I just highlight uh, that range right there. And there it is. Relatively straightforward. The hard part is all the estimating, but relatively straightforward when it comes to you know creating a template in Excel. 
124,000. You're willing to pay that for the machine? It's only 100,000? You better jump on it. Now, I did uh, the same math over here. And uh, if you're in charge of the spreadsheet, you want to do it a couple different ways. Make sure you got it uh, calculating correctly. I added it all up and got the same thing. Now, now I'm going to actually come down here and I'm going to clear all this. We don't need this. Um, on the home ribbon, you can go to clear, clear all, and that clears formatting and content. Now, one last thing, or two last things. Uh, let's figure out something. Let's figure out the added benefit of taking this project because you can see we're willing to spend 124,000, 124k approximately, but the machine only cost 100k. So this is called the net present value. This is when you compare the valuation on the future cash flows as you see it compared to the original cost. Now we, uh, this is a negative. We can see with our eyes it's a positive about 24,000, right? So I'm actually going to say equals negative this, that gives me the positive, plus that, and that's because it's a negative, 24,000. So that's the added value that we get from taking on this project. Now, these cash flows, let's just say right here, it was only uh, 10,000, right? Still, there's a positive amount. Now, what if it was 10,000 here, right? And so now, the amount we're willing to pay is much less than the price. So now the asset looks overvalued. And you can see the net present value is a minus. All right, um, this is chapter five. We're learning about the basics of future value cash flow analysis. In chapters eight and nine, we'll actually do uh, net present value technique and actually calculate and estimate some of these cash flows. So we'll delve in uh, much more deeply into the process of what is called capital budgeting. All right, next video we will start to talk about interest rates. All right, see you next video.